In this video, I'm going to show you how to make two different bases to make your own beautiful nipple pasties. These are the two ways that have worked the best for me and are super cheap and easy to make yourself. This is the first in my nipple pasty series, so stay tuned to see how to make all of these designs. I'm Emily. I'm an artist. Here's a weird thing that I made. For our first option for our nipple pasty base, I'm using only two things, which are craft felt and a hot glue gun. And for the second option, I'm using a material called buckram, which you can get at most fabric stores. It's also traditionally used for hat making. Very cool. I'll be using this E6000 glue. Kind of toxic, but does the trick real good. Also going to be using some clothespins, some school glue and paint brushes, and a thick satiny fabric. Throughout the video, I will be using various citrus to represent nipples. First thing, you should measure your nipple to see what size of paste you need to make, and always make the base at least one centimeter or a little bit larger than your actual nipple. The template that I use is six and a half centimeters wide, but one size does not fit all. I'm going to take my craft felt and cut out two circles according to my template. You will see that my template is Pac-Man shaped and yours doesn't need to be but you will be needing to cut a slit from the exterior edge into the exact center so it can be helpful to know where the center is of your template. I'd also like to mention that instead of felt, you could use craft foam, vinyl, or even leather, something that's going to hold the shape of the cone rigidly. I like felt because it's soft. I think that craft foam uh, maybe wouldn't last as long, and it's also very cheap. You can also see here that as soon as I put the felt into the cone shape, it does appear a little bit smaller, so that's why your template or the original circle that you cut out has to be bigger than your actual nipple. It's always better to start big and you can cut away the excess if you need to, but if it's too small, you won't be able to build it back up. Then I'm going to apply a thin strip of glue to the slit that I cut, just as close to the, the edge of it as you can, and then I'm going to fold it over on top of itself to create that cone shape. You can make it a little more flat or a little more pointy like Madonna, whatever you prefer. You're just going to hold it and pinch it in place until it's fully dry. You can then cut away any excess and then I sort of fold it inside out and cut away that little triangle piece that's left so it's nice, it sits nice and flush on your body. And you can see the finished product ready for decoration here. In an upcoming video, I'm going to show you how to turn this base into these beautiful sequin pasties. Next up, we have the buckram pasty base. Here's a bunch of the material. It sort of has a window screen look. Uh, it has a really nice structure, keeps the shape of the pasty really well. And this is what traditional pasties would be made from. So we're gonna follow the same process as before by cutting out two of the circle templates out of the material and making sure that we cut a straight slit to the very center of the pasty as well. You could very well use hot glue or school glue here as your adhesive to put the base together, but I'm going to be using the E6000 glue. Just make sure you use it in a well-ventilated area because she's not good to breathe in. I also like to use clothespins to hold the bases together until they are fully dried. You can then apply a thin layer of glue to the outer edge of the pasty, then you can create your cone shape to put it all together. I like to gently press it in so that the glue starts to stick and apply a clothespin and make sure I bring it right to the top of that slit. Let that dry for at least a couple hours until you apply your fabric. I like to use fabric on the inside and the outside to give it a nice finished look. I also like to use something that is quite thick. A lot of the satiny fabrics can actually be quite thin and the glue will start to come through. So try and find one that's thicker and you will thank me. I'm cutting out two squares with a slit for the top of the pasty. For this, I'm gonna be using school glue and a paintbrush, but you could also use the E6000 and it'll just be that much more durable. But I just wanna show you that you can really use whatever you want and whatever you have around the house. So I start by applying a little bit of glue and lining up that slit with the slit of the base. Um, you don't have to do that, that's just what I like to do. 
I personally like to do a little bit of glue at a time and just make sure that all the fabric is sitting nice and flat, really spending my time just going over it and making sure that it makes contact with the glue underneath. But you can do it however you want. I also like to keep a cloth nearby for when it gets a little messy and to make sure that there's no glue on my fingers while I'm doing this. And when you make your way all around, you can cut off the excess fabric with some scissors. And then I like to take a little bit of extra glue and apply it to that inside edge of the slit that we just made to make sure that it's gonna sit down nice and properly. Let those dry, ideally overnight. And before you add the inside fabric, I like to trim it at this point so that I can use the base, the buckram base, as a guide to keep that perfect circle. And we're gonna follow that same process with the inside, cutting out two squares with a slit and lining up that slit with the slit of the inside of the base before we apply the fabric to the rest of it. When you're done gluing the fabric, you can cut off the excess just like before, apply extra glue to the inside edge, put it down, let it dry, see you later. After more trimming, you are finally done and ready to decorate. Up next, I'm going to show you how to make all of the pasties in this video, so stay tuned for more weird crafts.